What's going on, guys? We are back in Windows 11 24H2 again. Still no sight of Windows 12. No news on that. But we do have a new build in 24H2. As you guys know, I'm running the Canary build. This is a virtual machine, obviously. I have this pinned. Let me unpin that so it looks a little cleaner. And we just got a new build two days ago. Less than two days ago, actually. So today is June 1st, uh, 2024. And as of today, the newest build in Canary is 26227 so this just came out guys i'm one of the first people to review it i've only seen a couple other videos online so we're gonna take a look at what's new um what's been fixed and then any issues that are outstanding so i think one of the biggest things that's new well it's not brand new because they have tried this out in previous versions i like it uh, i think a lot of people gave the same feedback copilot is now an app as opposed to being docked over here in the system tray so what that does is when we launch it, it launches like an app, right? We have the ability to resize this, move it around. We can snap it. Uh, it behaves just like any other application in Windows 11. So I really like this. I think this is a big improvement over having it over here on the system tray. Because if you guys remember when it was on the system tray, it had to be on the right-hand side of your screen. And you could only resize it as far as stretching it out here. You couldn't move it around. I think this is a much better layout. It looks cleaner. Uh, this resembles ChatGPT a lot more to me, where you have your little, you know, um, options here on the left-hand side, including your Copilot GPTs, your plugins, and your notebook. Um, so yeah, I think this is great. And let's just say Copilot is here to stay, guys, because as part of this news. They also announced the fact that any new PCs that are going to be rolling out with Windows 11 are going to come with a keyboard that actually has a key on the keyboard itself built for Copilot. So you're going to have a Copilot key on your keyboard. <clears throat> so that should tell you right there, they're not looking to uh, change their mind. This is no longer like, hey, are we going to really dive in and, and dedicate ourselves to Copilot? This is a for sure thing. If you're modifying the keyboard to have its own button to launch an application, this is uh, like an all-in move, so to speak. They're not going anywhere with Copilot anytime soon, guys. So if you hate it, I'm sorry. If you love it, great. Um, previously, we could hit the Windows key and C, which I'm doing right now, and that no longer launches Copilot. I'll close this just to show you. So I am hitting Windows key and C, and nothing is happening. Uh, no worries, though, because now you're going to have that button on your keyboard, right? That key. <laughs> Most of us don't have that, I obviously don't. So what you can do with any of your pinned applications, if you're not aware, guys, uh, if you have something down here on the taskbar and it's pinned, so this is your uh, multiple desktops, right? So this one is not, this one doesn't count as far as your pinned icons. You can move the rest of them around, right, in order. You can't move it past there. So right now, Copilot's at position one. So anything pinned, you can hit the Windows key and hit the number on your keyboard. So this is one. I'll do Windows key one. That launches Copilot. So if I do Windows key two, that should launch File Explorer. And if I do Windows key three, that should launch Edge. So a nice little pro tip there if you guys weren't aware when you have these pinned applications. Just look at the order of them. And then if you want to use a default shortcut to launch them, Windows key and then the number key that correlates to the position of your pinned application. So pretty cool stuff. All right, so let's take a look at this, guys. Create a uh, space image is just an example that they give here. So this would be your history up here where it's actually going to save, just like in GPT, right? It's going to save your conversations. You can go back. Uh, you can remove them, rename them. You can share them. So very similar to GPT. Um, this looks like just clicking on this will bring you into the prompt if you're not already in there. And then down here, this is pretty cool. Copilot GPTs. So as you know, like in GPT-4, chat GPT, that is, you can build out uh, GPTs and then you can look in the GPT library. And if you're not familiar with that, these are basically like predefined agents. So this one's just your default copilot. This one's a designer. So this one's going to build images for you. And then they've got a, a few other various ones that you can pick from for free, like vacation planner. There's a cooking assistant. And then there's a fitness trainer. Now, the really cool part, or where this gets really cool, in my opinion, is the ability to build your own copilots, just like you can do in ChatGPT, right, if you have the ChatGPT Plus version. However, when you click on that, you're going to find out that you can't do that for free. 
So you do need to pay $20 a month, just like ChatGPT Plus, to have the ability to create your own Copilot, or I'm sorry, your own custom Copilot GPTs. So this is called Microsoft Copilot Pro. Uh, I'm going to look into this a little further as far as use for end users. I do actually have this at work, but I don't use it like I would at home, right, for obvious reasons. Um, but I, I would like to gauge the difference and what the use cases are and where your $20 is better applied, whether that be on the Copilot Pro or the GPT Plus. Uh, right now, just from everything that I've seen and that I know, obviously I have more knowledge on ChatGPT from a personal user standpoint because I use that day in and day out. And I do know also that like ChatGPT Plus, not only can you create your own GPTs, but you can go in there and browse the GPT library and use other people's GPTs that they've created. Now, I'm assuming that you'll be able to do the same thing with Copilot Pro, and maybe I'll do this free trial at some point. I'm not gonna do it right now, but maybe we'll do that and we'll explore um, Copilot Pro and see if we can actually leverage other people's uh, G Copilot GPTs that they've already created, because I think that's a really cool feature. I actually use it quite a bit in GPT. So yeah, this is Copilot Pro. And just know that when you see that new, um, you're gonna see the application when you get to this version. Copilot GPTs, you can only use those, there's only a few that are built in that you can use for free. And then after that, you're gonna have to be a member of the pro, which is 20 bucks a month. All right, from there, we can look at plugins. So this is another really cool feature. Um, you, have, you can link like Instacart, Kayak, which is like a traveling thing. Uh, you can link your phone. So this is actually kind of cool. I haven't tried this yet, but I might. So this can look up contact information, read and send text messages using your Android phone. So I could see this being very handy, right? Like you can talk to a co-pilot and say, respond to that text or read my, or look up a contact or whatever. So this is getting to be a uh, very integrated personal assistant, right? If you have an Android phone, which I do. I'm no longer team iPhone. Never really was, to be honest. <laughs> Always been an Android guy. Once iPhone for a little bit to try it out, um, mainly so I can just learn my way around it because I'm an IT. I need to know how to support things. Uh, I'm back on Android. I think Android's better. But hey, I'm sure a lot of you will disagree with me on that because iPhone's obviously the most popular phone. Here's another one that I am familiar with, guys. Suno. If you haven't heard of Suno, Suno AI is awesome. You can literally type a sentence and you know tell it, hey, create a song about this, that, and the other. Like, give it any topic and tell it the style of music. So you could say, like, create a hard rock song about the morning IT meeting, and it will just run with it. Not only creating the instrumentals, like the instruments and everything like that, the song. It'll create the lyrics too. So it's really cool. If you guys haven't checked out Suno, I suggest checking that out. And now you have direct integration um, with Copilot. So you can turn this on and say, hey, write a song about this, write in Copilot. So that's very cool. The last one is notebooks, kind of like a workspace where you can kind of type back and forth and have a converse, ongoing conversation with the Copilot. So I think this is a really good move. Um, Knowing that Copilot's not going anywhere, I mean, heck, like I said, they're going to dedicate a, a key on your keyboard for Copilot. Since it's not going anywhere, I like the fact that it is now a Windows app and not just this weird little sidebar thing. I just felt like, I don't know, made me uncomfortable. I didn't like that. I didn't like having it stuck over here on the side. And yeah, it wasn't cool. This is much better. So good move. I hope they keep this around in further builds. I think they will because, again, reading up on the articles, it sounds like a lot of people have given them similar feedback to what I'm telling you now. All right. So the next thing that uh, is new is the ability, or I should say the support for Emoji 15.1. So those are just new emojis. So if you guys don't know, you can hit the Windows key and the period, the little dot on your keyboard, and that'll open up the emoji screen. So now with the 15.1 support, there are some new emojis. Uh, let me just see if I can find a couple for you. This is a new one. So a head shaking horizontally. Um, this is a head shaking vertically. And then they have some different stuff where, and I'll pull up the site right now to show you. So like directional walking emojis, things like that. I'm going to link you guys this. I'm going to provide a link for you guys for this uh blog.windows.com where they're announcing the 26227 um, information. 
So like I said, the co-pilot news and then the emoji news, and they kind of show you some examples of the new emojis. So this is kind of cool. They've got like a, uh, a little wheel wheelchair emoji that goes in multiple directions. I like that. Very cool. All right. So those are two of the, uh, I would say the biggest new features on top of that. Uh, we're beginning, they're beginning to roll out a new linked devices page under settings. I don't have anything logged in with a Microsoft account right now. So we probably won't see that in here. But let's take a look, see if it loads up here. So I think we would have to be, uh, one second guys, one second. Yeah, we need to be logged in with a Microsoft account and then we would see a linked devices. And then from there, it's actually kind of cool. I mean, it's, you're really buying into Microsoft and that's obviously the direction that they're pushing things. But uh, the settings page would only show on home and pro versions of Windows 11. And if you're signed into a Windows, I'm sorry, if you're signed into Windows with your Microsoft account. So what does it do? It allows you to manage uh, PCs and Xbox consoles that you're signed into with that Microsoft account. So you could be on this PC, uh, this instance of Windows 11, and let's say you have some Xbox, or maybe you have another PC where you're logged in with that same Microsoft account. Now you can go, the, go into that particular menu or setting under the accounts in uh, settings, and you can manage those different devices. Probably make more sense if I had it up on my screen here, guys, but I don't. Let me just see if I can get you to that actual page. Yeah, we won't be able to see that, unfortunately, because I'm not logged in with a, a Microsoft account, but that's okay. And you can, I mean, obviously think about that. Um, this really kind of emphasizes or reinforces the fact that Microsoft really wants to steer you towards not only having a Microsoft account, but logging into your devices using a Microsoft account. I have not been doing that. I've been using a, a local account that I build out uh, for several reasons, mainly privacy, things like that. But I think it's coming. It was part of my predictions video. Um, I'm going to link a card to that one for you guys. I predict a lot of things about the uh, coming of Windows 12 and AI and Microsoft really making you kind of get deeper and deeper into bed with them if you want to leverage all the features. So I think that's coming if you want to be able to do a lot of different things. This being one example where you can uh, control those devices across, you know, whether it's Xbox or multiple other PCs, laptops, where you're logged in with that Microsoft account, that's obviously only available if you're using the Microsoft account. So I think that's pretty cool, but unfortunately I can't leverage that because again, I'm not using a Microsoft account to log into my devices yet. But Depending on how many features and how much capability is tied into that, they may steer me to do so, but to be determined. All right, guys, so a couple other things to note here. I'll just pull that web page back up. There were a few fixes, uh, fixes for known issues. They fixed an issue believed to be the underlying cause for some insiders noticing stutters in some animations recently dropping frames. Uh, particularly with task view. I didn't have this, but I did see a video on this. So that's good that they've apparently fixed that. Uh, also, they fixed an underlying issue with, or which could lead to some apps not starting on startup, even though they were enabled at startup apps and settings. So just the startup features weren't working. Again, I, I didn't really have a lot of things starting up on startup. I did have a um, motion wallpaper that I use to where the wallpaper is actually like moving or you, it would literally play a YouTube video as your wallpaper. That definitely worked because it started to get on my nerves. So I had to go disable it. So that one was working for me, but apparently wasn't working for everyone as far as specific startup apps. So they've uh, solved that good. And then the last one they noted here was that they fixed an underlying issue, which could lead to the pop-up asking for permissions to use location not appearing which could lead to app issues without location access. So I wasn't really using mine for uh, anything tied to location, but that's obviously a big one. If you do uh, leverage applications that need location permissions and you're not able to give it to them, that would obviously hinder your ability to do whatever you're looking to do. 
And then windowing, they fixed an issue related to uh, showing tabs in the alt tab. Related to showing tabs in the alt tab, which could lead to frequent explorer.exe crashes. I never experienced that. I do use alt tab quite a bit. Uh, that's that feature there where you jump between things. So that's handy. I'm glad they fixed it. I didn't know it was an issue, but that's good they fixed it. Uh, they also fixed an issue. This one I was aware of because I tested this out in a previous build and it wouldn't work. And now the Windows key W does open that widgets menu again. So I, I'm not a huge widget guy, but I know that wasn't working. Uh, so if you're into widgets and you were on that last build that came out, it wasn't working. They fixed that now, so it's working. All right, and then as mentioned in a previous one, they fixed the Explorer EXE crashing issues. Um, known issues. So I think this is similar to what I talked about on the last one as far as known issues. Basically, some people are reporting when they're in the dev and canary channels, they're not able to, to update from these previous builds such as 26.040 or 23.620. So if you're still having that issue, guys, it has uh, been reported quite a bit. No worries, though, if you do want to try out the new 26.227. This article has a link straight to the ISO here. And then you could also use something like UUP dump to get that latest ISO as well. And another thing they note here is introducing suggested replies in the phone link for Android. So kind of cool. If you have your phone linked on here, um, not only can you use those new cool emojis, but you can use, I'm guessing this is Copilot underneath. Uh, it's going to use AI to suggest a new response so if they see a conversation going on it's kind of going to tap into that and say hey maybe you want to reply with this so if you weren't lazy already you'd probably be even lazier now and then here's just some reminders i won't go over all this but reminders for insiders and canary uh, it's almost like a disclaimer here just kind of telling you hey use this at your own risk so on and so forth and i think that's about all i wanted to cover there guys so yeah again if you want to uh, do a clean install you can use uup dump or you can uh, check out this article. I'll have a link to, in the description and you can get the latest ISO here. So let me know if you guys have tried out 26.227 yet or 24H2, any flavor of that, any build of that. And if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, I do give the Copilot app two thumbs up as far as an improvement. Uh, I really wish that this here was free. That would be very nice. I mean, especially since this is inside of an operating system. ChatGPT is obviously a standalone product by OpenAI. But this is a Microsoft product. So I really think a smarter move would have been to either discount this so it's not the same price as GPT. But as you guys probably know, Microsoft and OpenAI are totally in bed together. Microsoft owns 49% of the the open AI company. So there's probably some type of agreement where if they undercut them or something like that, it would, you know, they probably have to stay on the same, same page, same terms, things like that. You know, I'm sure boardroom talk, big wigs, all that, but, but yeah, it would have been nice if this was free uh, or at least a portion of this was free because we are already paying for an operating system. So now they want to sell us bolt-ons, which is uh pretty typical of Microsoft, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, no word of windows 12 yet. So it is what it is, I guess. And we'll just stick around and keep checking for it. But a couple new features, a couple fixes. And that's about it for the latest build on Windows 11 24H2. Hope you guys did stick around to the end of the video. If you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I am shooting for 10,000 subs this year, guys. We're getting close to 7K. I think we might hit it this weekend. So if you can, if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Get the word out there. IT Unicorn is going to be on top, baby, eventually. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great weekend, and until the next video, take care.